Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, I have a classic reaction video for you today, looking at some re um, uh, um, hacks or tips and tricks from TikTok, Instagram Reels, everything. They're all the same. Let's get straight into it, but if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. And it is my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then do please consider subscribing. Let me sort out this lash on the inside corner. Honestly, lashes are the most uncomfortable. As somebody who doesn't wear makeup, I wear makeup, um, on video, on Instagram, for social media reasons, but never wore them before doing social media because I was just doing makeup on other people. Let me just tell you, I still find false lashes so uncomfortable to wear. <laughs> okay, let's just straight into it. And let's start with our first tip, trick, hack, whatever it is. Let's go. So I learned this trick a few years ago and this is the only way I do my lashes now. Apparently this is how drag queens put on their lashes and it is bulletproof, bitch. I've been freelancing makeup for about like six years now and this is the only way I put people's lashes on. This is how I can ensure their, their lashes will stay on no matter what. No matter what. I had a girl tell me that her lashes stayed on through the Lollapalooza thunderstorm. Literally sweat and thunderstorm and your lashes stayed on, bitch! Okay, so I use hair bonding glue. Stop judging, stop judging, stop. I can, I can feel you judging, but I swear it's the best lash glue out there, okay? So it literally is just basically like normal lash glue, but it just stays on so much better. And also pro is that it dries a lot faster than regular lash glue. So like it's a lot less time to fuck it up. Okay, that's it. That's basically it. <laughs> okay, a few things. So that's a very old technique. I I don't necessarily think it actually comes from drag queens. I actually think that... um technique originates from black women. I I certainly learned it myself from um, black women who I used to work with. However, there's a few things in that video which, um, one, yes, it, of course, it really, really grips to the lash. It's hair glue. Of course, it's of course it's going to be really good. However, one thing I would say is if you're going to use that on a client, make sure they know how to take their lashes off properly without damaging their lashes. I hope you're insured for that kind of thing. <laughs> of course, I'm sure you are. This is just general advice for anyone. I personally wouldn't use it on a client. I'm sure you have their permission before doing it. However, you know, I find that if it's just a strip lash, if you can get like black um, lash glue now that isn't as strong as the hair glue, but even like my favorite, where's where's my lash glue? The duo glue. This one, the one that has that kind of like shiny, shiny, like it, almost like holographic, holographic? Mm, I, I know people are really weird about word holographic. Look to it. If you leave that to get tacky long enough and put enough glue on, it grips. Like it does, it grips, grips, grips to the, I mean, look. I left that for a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but it really, really stays on. I, I, don't, I wouldn't go that dramatic. And I do understand that sometimes you might need a little bit more help on the inside corners or outside corners, but it's a good tip, but be careful. <laughs> you guys wanted to know how I got my base to look like this when my skin actually looks like this. First things first, let's look at the basic color zones of the face. This is gonna help us determine what color to use and how much of it. We actually have different undertones and hues all over our face, but because it's so subtle, sometimes it gets difficult to notice. NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray, I'm gonna be using this product a lot throughout the tutorial, spraying it all over my face and patting it in before I even put on any makeup at all. You have to make sure it is completely dry, okay? When this stuff dries down, I swear to you, it is tackier than even the Hydro Grip Primer. I'll be using the LA Girl Pro Conceal in a shade lighter than my skin tone. I personally prefer to use a loose pigment or eyeshadow to control the hue of my concealer. However, LA Girl does have color correctors and you can just buy those instead. As you can see here, I subtly changed the hue of the concealer from peach to yellow. I like to use a pale yellow to tackle the darkest spots first. Because the concealer I made is a shade lighter than my skin tone, it lifts the darkness in the red spots. Dark red spots like this means that there's an excess of blue, so I'm using the yellow to kind of counter that. After targeting the dark red spots, I'm going to go in and gently tap it in. You might not be able to cover the dark red spots completely, but don't put on another layer of concealer. We're working in very thin layers to build up the coverage without the cakiness. As for color mixing your concealer, if you have a skin tone like me, the forehead can take a lot of yellows, the mid face can take a slightly peachier yellow, and your lower face can be anywhere in between those two colors. Similar concept for medium, deep to very deep skin tones as well. Except for instead of pale yellow like me, you want to shift it over to peachy and more orange tones and a lot more saturation. Reason being more melanin just needs more pigment. I have a scab texture here and when you're working with areas like this, you have to be patient. I'm being very precise in my layers and just very gently patting it in with my ring finger. 
You guys can see here how easy it is to cover up the darkness of the red spots with this yellow base concealer. I'm painting on a thin layer and then tapping, painting on a thin layer, tapping, and repeating. Like I said before, it's a lot of layering. Look at how that spot just disappears. You gotta trust the process! My under eyes are kind of like a desaturated reddish purple, so I can get away with using a yellow concealer to cover it up. I know you guys thought it was really weird in my last color correction video when I was talking about color theory and why I was using yellow to color correct this area, but um, you know what? Colors don't even exist, so <laughs> life is hard and colors are weird. Anyway, I'm just layering some peach and yellow concealers here because different areas of the eye bags have different colors. The corners of my mouth have some discoloration and it's kind of greenish yellow, so I'm using a peach concealer here to kind of counter that. Round two of the setting spray. Same concept as the first step, except now we're working on the medium red tones. I have a lot of redness and texture, but I don't want to cover up all of the redness. That's why you can kind of see me stippling it on in certain areas and leaving some areas blank. I'm doing it this way because allowing some of your natural discoloration to peek through is what's really gonna make it look like skin. Just try your best not to cover all of the redness that you see. Okay, so the nostril area of your nose, everybody knows, hates makeup. I'm applying on both sides of the crease, but not in the crease itself. This is gonna give you coverage in that area without all the product buildup. Okay, setting spray round three, just to marry everything together and make it look like skin. Now I'm just going in and fine tuning everything. Last step is setting powder. I'm picking it up with a powder puff and then taking off the excess on the back of my hand. Setting with a powder puff does actually make a difference on your under eye. I'm next to a window, so this is what it looks like in natural daylight. It was kind of gloomy in LA today, so that's why it looks like this. And this is what it looks like with flash. If you made it to the end of this video, congrats. Uh, you probably have enough patience to actually try this out. <laughs> Good point at the end there. That is such an amazing, amazing technique about color theory. And I love how they said about, you know, color theory. People don't always have to use red to cancel out under the, people don't always have to use green to cancel out you know blemishes or or um orange under the eyes there's different hues in the skin and it, you'd be surprised to find that you can use different colors in de different areas i think we've been fed from um makeup brands trying to make in the past, trying to make color correction can consumer friendly, where they've given us the purple, green, yellow, and orange and saying, this is for here, this is for here, this is for here, this is for here, I got a bit of fluff there. What's all the sticky stuff? And then, and then everyone's rode with that and be like, oh well, yeah, that's the only place. It, it's different, it's different. And everyone has those different um, hues and saturations and uh, uh, depths in their skin. So. I, I love that coming through. You can tell that person's an artist. That is a great technique. You do, oh my gosh, you would have to have a lot of patience. Can you imagine going around your face? I can imagine it becomes quite addictive. Almost like, you know, when you go to someone's house or like you're in an aeroplane and they have this one mirror where you go to the bathroom and you take a look in the mirror like, oh my God, this mirror is a really good mirror to pick my skin in. <laughs> Almost like that. But yeah, good, really, really good tip. It's nice to see um, color, theory, color theory being used in a way that isn't like, Orange, green, no. No. No, 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 no. Exactly. I, you know what, I actually really like that as well. <laughs> Let's get a bad one in here. I want to react to a bad one. That's really nice because I think, again, with this overlining of the lips, when we think overlining or when we think of enhancing the lip shape and making them look bigger, we think of literally drawing around the lip and thinking, or, you know, doing this nasty, like, muddy contour around the lip and, and making it appear, thinking it makes it appear bigger. However, contouring and changing the structure of something, again, Again, you have to have that depth and that um, difference in, in um, highs and lows. So by shading in those outside corners, you're slightly pushing the corners back and then you're giving this pout to the middle. Um, that's how I would personally make a lip look bigger. If somebody really wants me to overline the lip, then I will. But if I was going to make someone's lip look bigger, I would just shade in the outside corners um, before any lip product. Uh, or, you know, I've prepped the lip with a balm, pa um, done the eyes, done the skin, got rid of any excess balm sitting on top. Then I'll go around with a pencil, do the corners, gently fade in those corners before doing any lip product. And then I'll apply the main lip uh, product to the middle of the lip. Of course, depending on the look, the pencil is going to be a slightly deeper or excessively deeper color to, to the lip, depending on what, or what they want. The lip color, sorry. But yeah, I, I think that's a really great idea. You'd be really surprised just how deepening those corners, the effect you can get with, with plumping the lip. All right, my loves, I have gotten so many compliments on my lip shape recently. The truth is I have updated my lip contour technique. I'm so obsessed with it and I'm gonna teach you guys everything you need to know. So the first thing that I do, I did um, scrub my lips, make sure you get rid of all the dead skin. So I am going to grab a really nice soft 
nudie brown shade. This is from our lip contour in Sandy Beige. So first of all, I'm gonna look at the space around my lips and see what I need the most. So I can see there's a little extra space, just a little extra space here. So I'm gonna start first by drawing the line here. Now I'm going to draw basically an arrow. This is gonna add dimension to the entire area over here and it's gonna make it look like it's more contoured and it's not flat. Next, I'm going to start by contouring the bottom area because I wanna add dimension there too. I typically contour here. And then I'm also gonna go right here and here. You can also add a small amount here and here. I'm gonna grab a eyeliner brush. This one is a little bit soft, it's not too pointed. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend those lines out a little bit. I'm not trying to buff them away, just rough them softly out. I'm gonna grab my foundation brush and I'm just gonna now apply a little foundation to the area. I'm now just gonna grab my favorite shade of lip liner, this is Pinky Brown, and I'm just gonna go ahead and line my lips. As I'm lining, I'm now gonna shape. I always draw over and I just draw it straight here after I do that. I'm gonna grab bombshell. I'm gonna put it all over. Let this dry. So you can see now after contouring, the space around my lips does not look flat. It also just kind of corrected any type of issues if I had too much space here or whatever um, I felt I had. All right, and this is the easy way to contour your lips. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what you guys wanna see next. I really like that. I thought a really, you know what I've, I've been seeing a lot recently and I just buys it and it is so fucking ridiculous because it just looks shit is when people grab like a concealer or like um a bronzing stick and just do that circle around the mouth it it is just making it look dark you're not contouring or adding structure you're just making it look muddy and it looks muddy on people it doesn't look good so to see this to see a concentrated depth of um you know uh, accentuating this part because when you accentuate this part you know, it's gonna make this look bigger. When you accentuate this part here, you're pushing down, you know, you're, you're creating more shadow, so therefore your, this side is flat, this side you're turning it up. On a chin here, I just, I really, that is how you contour. You bear in mind the structure, what each thing is gonna do. You don't just whack a line on and blend it out. That's not contouring, that's just bronzing, you know? <laughs> contouring is, um specific dimensions and and precision in altering the bone structure or how or the structure of the face or the lip shape or the eye shape you know i i really really liked that that was really really nice if you love wearing makeup but don't have an eyeshadow palette at the moment don't worry i'm going to tell you a few eye makeup tricks using just a concealer as you can see, I've already done my base makeup, but I haven't done anything on my eyes. And what happens is, when you do base makeup karte ho, and you don't put anything on the eyes, you're not doing any elaborate eye makeup, your eyes can look a little raccoonish, which is what is happening right now. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. You just need your concealer, a small fluffy brush, like an eyeshadow brush, and one very thin eyeliner brush. Let's begin. Before starting, just take a spoolie and brush up your eyebrow hair because it's important to shape them a little bit and know how much area you actually have under the eyebrow. I'm gonna take a little bit of this concealer on the back of my hand. Never ever apply it directly on your eyes because that's just too much product. You don't need that much. First of all, the easiest step is just take a little bit on your finger, like literally a dot of concealer. Tilt your head backwards and just place it on the middle of your eyelid. That's it. That's all you need. Just keep dabbing it. Do you see that? So this becomes like a very simplified version of a halo eye effect just my inner or the outer corner are darker than the center of the eyelid. So we're not doing that, we're just making the center brighter so that these automatically look darker and you get the same effect but with lesser mehnat. Just make sure that the concealer doesn't reach the inner corner and the outer corner of the eye because that's the whole point. You just need the center of your eyelid to look lighter than the rest of the eye. Now we need to enhance the shape of the eye. So we need to follow this whole crease line that is happening here, this fold of the skin. And for that, we need to conceal this pigmentation so that the attention can be drawn to the shape of the eye. Take a fluffy brush, take some concealer on it and just tilt your head back and just place it on top of your pigmentation. And don't drag it, just keep dabbing it till it blends out. Make sure that you're following the shape of your eye. So if my eye is shaped like that, sorry, I dragged. Just make sure that you don't go too close to the crease, otherwise your eyes will start looking hooded. 
आई थिंक आई वेंट टू फार सो आई एम जस्ट गोना लाइक वाइप इट ऑफ क्विकली थोड़ा सा हल्का सा हाँ दिस इज परफेक्ट नीड सम कंसीलर हेयर टू हाइड दिस लाइन सो आई एम जस्ट गोना डू दैट नाउ वॉट वी नीड टू डू इज गिव दिस आई शेप फ्रॉम द आउटर कॉर्नर थिन आई लाइन अ ब्रश टेक सम प्रोडक्ट ऑन इट एंड जस्ट मेक अ विंग अंडर द आई And now take the fluffy brush and blend it, but downwards. Just keep dabbing it till it blends. Yeah, it's started to give your eye some shape. And if you still see the line, just dab it with your finger, and that will remove all the excess product. Yeah. So whenever you do eye makeup, you always add like a brown eye shadow or like a contour powder under your eyes to give it depth. So now, when you're not using eye shadows, you're only using a concealer. Then make sure that आपका concealer under eyes का जो concealer है ये ऊपर तक नहीं पहुंच रहा है इसको यहीं पर रोक दो सो दैट दिस एरिया ऑटोमेटिकली लुक्स डार्कर देन दिस पार्ट एंड इट एड्स लाइक अ डेप्स टू योर आईज एंड नाउ द नेक्स्ट स्टेप नाउ अगेन टेक सम प्रोडक्ट ऑन द थिन आई लाइन अ ब्रश एंड जस्ट मेक अ लाइन हेयर दैट्स इट जस्ट इतना सा वाइप ऑफ द ब्रश इस पर कोई प्रोडक्ट नहीं होना चाहिए एंड जस्ट वेरी softly it is blend this line out i hope you can see the difference the slight subtle difference that it's made that one little line and we're not done yet we're going to define the eyebrows ka niche wala part a little under the eyebrows just make a line with the concealer and blend it out using this brush only this will basically pull up your eyebrows a little more and you can totally tell that the eyebrows look a little lifted now the one thing you need to be careful about is that ye jab aap brow bone apni highlight karo so then this concealer cannot reach the crease the crease still has to be like the darker area of your eyelid now i know people are going to say ki wo concealer ko aankh pe laga ke concealer crease hota hai and all that which is true but the thing is that this is a jugaad if you don't have eye shadows then you do this and honestly if you use like very little concealer then wo creasing utni pata chalti nahi hai and if you still want to make sure that it doesn't crease just take the same fluffy brush take some translucent powder and place it only where आपने concealer लगाया था like only on the middle of the eyelids and this part and just basically set the concealer this is what my eyes looked like before they look very pigmented and patchy and this is what they look like now do you see the difference I hope this video helped you figure out a few tricks that you can do using just your concealer because sometimes you just don't want to put so much eyeshadow in ram jham and all that and you still want to do like a very quick 2 minute thing that would make your eyes look sharper so yeah I hope this helped That was great. I I went that little bit. See I do it with eyeshadow that little line to like brighten but I never thought to do that with concealer. on like just every day. That is such a good tip. I think that's a really really nice tip for people maybe who don't want to wear too much makeup or maybe they're just starting out and just want to wear a little bit of makeup. Um again the concealer on the eyelid if it was an excessive amount it would most definitely crease and by the eyelid I literally just mean this eyelid here but that tiny small amount set with a powder would be absolutely fine. It's when it's used as like over the whole lid as an eyeshadow base. It you can it's a little bit of a worry, but also if you're doing this and you're not putting eyeshadow on top, you don't need to worry about it ruining your eye makeup, you know, because you can just tap it away. And um, that's a really what a good look. That's what I consider a hack, like a really good effective, you know, um yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> okay, what's next? <laughs> okay, so let's talk. Okay, I'm um, okay. That's some five minute crafts level. <laughs> you know, okay. Let's. You know what's good about that, right? Is it's a great way of placing, of getting your contour symmetrical if you want to, in a drag queeny way, <laughs> to have those lines that do that connect to the corner of your mouth, which. isn't the way to contour for every shape face but looks looks I was going to say I don't know <laughs> you know what I'm going to say it's for entertainment purposes only would I recommend it to everyone probably not probably not okay so I I really wanted to um 
watch this. This is Michaela. And if you haven't seen this um, hack yet on any, any, on any social media, there's this audio and it's like your perfect lip liner or lip combo is gonna be your eyebrow pencil as your lip liner and then like your blush or like bronzer, whatever, as your lip color. Now, here's the thing. That, I mean, that's gonna look great on some people, that kind of like gray, um, kind of like, brow pencils are basically a little bit more ashier in tone. They're not as warm as, um, oh, sorry, they're not as, uh, sorry, they don't have as much redness to them as maybe a lip liner would. Um, even like a nude lip liner can have that pinky ready undertone. Um, and it might work great on some people. And it did back in the nineties <laughs> when people were doing it back then. And then I was saying, as somebody, at as me on Instagram, and I was like, you know what? This, if you want a natural look, black lip liner, I'm all for it. But if you want a natural look, like my perfect lip combo, for me personally, isn't gonna be black eyeliner, like my, my black brow pencil. So I just started watching this one with Michaela, and her eyebrows are black. So I want to see how this works for her. Your perfect lip shade will be your eyebrow liner, your eyebrow pencil lining your lip. My eyebrow pencil is black. <laughs> this may not be the move for me, but I've seen a lot of people do this trend and it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna line my lips with my eyebrow pencil. I'll be blown away if this looks good. Okay, I, <laughs> I'm a little skeptical right now, okay? It looks kinda gray. <laughs> blush I most often use Makeup by Mario Dusty Rose. So now you put the blush in the center. Okay. <laughs> and then gloss. <laughs> I don't know. What do we think? <laughs> I really like it. I really, really like it. That was really nice. Um, okay, then fine. I think that's a really nice idea if you do want that subtly sculpted, a subtly contoured lip, then um, that kind of shade is a really, your brow pencil would be a really good option to use. Why not? It's just a nude, right? Um, but it is gonna be colder. It's gonna be that colder nude. We're talking about that 90s deep outline around the lip. So do make sure you blend it nicely around the edges and not just a line. And do take it like Michaela did in that video, take it up a little bit further so you can put some product over the top and that's gonna naturally blend it in for you. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any weird makeup TikToks or see anything like that, you can at me on TikTok. It's at Robert Welsh MUA on Instagram at Robert W L S H. And you can also follow me on Twitter if you want. You can send it to me on Twitter, right? I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Do consider subscribing and give this video a huge thumbs up. Thank you so much. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.